dear students i welcome you to your educational channel learn and educate in the last lecture we have studied about section 15 16 and 17 section 15 states about the court in which suits shall be instituted section 16 suits to be instituted where subject matter is situated section 17 suits for remember property situated within the local limits of jurisdiction of different courts now in the same manner we continue with the section 18th place of institution of suits where local limit where local limits of the jurisdiction of courts are uncertain subsection 1 where it is alleged to be uncertain within the local limits of the jurisdiction of which of two or more courts any immobile property is situated any one of those courts may if satisfied that there is ground for the alleged uncertainty record a statement to the effect and thereupon proceed to entertain and dispose of any suit relating to the property and its decree in the suit shall have the same effect as if the property were situated within the local limits of its jurisdiction provided that the suit is one with respect to which the court is competent as regards the nature and value of the suit to exercise jurisdictions section 18 sub section 1 explains want to say that where it is alleged to be uncertain within the local limits of the jurisdiction that the two or more courts of that within the two or more courts an immo property situated in that jurisdiction where there are two or more courts then any one of those courts may if satisfied that it is of the ground for the alleged uncertainty record a statement for that effect and proceed to entertain and dispose of any suit relating to that property that is that particular one court if it is satisfied that on the ground of alleged uncertainty it will starts the proceedings of the suit and dispose of the case and its decree in the suit shall have the same effect as if the property were situated within the local limits of that its jurisdiction as if the property was situated within that particular court's jurisdiction provided that the suit in respect of which the court is competent as regard to the nature and value to the suit to exercise the jurisdiction section 18 in subsection 2 where a statement has not been recorded under subsection 1 of section 18 and an objection is taken before an appellate or regional court that a decree or order in a suit relating to such property was made by a court not having jurisdiction where the property is situated the appellate or regional court shall not allow the objection unless in its opinion there was at the time of institution of the suit no reasonable ground or for uncertainty as to the court having jurisdiction with respect thereto and has been a consequent failure of the justice when a statement has not been recorded under subsection 1 an objection is taken before an appellate or regional court under that degree or a suit relating to that property it must be made by a court which does not have the jurisdiction where the property was situated then the appellate court or the regional court shall not allow the objection unless in its opinion there was in the opinion of the appellate or regional court there was no reasonable ground for uncertainty as to the court having jurisdiction with respect to and there has been a consequent failure of the justice now head towards the another section section 19 suits for compensation for wrongs to a person or removables when a suit is for compensation for wrong done to the person or to movable property if the wrong was done within the local limits of the jurisdiction of one court and the defendant resides or care resi resides voluntarily carries on the business or personally work for gain within the local limits of the jurisdiction of another court then the suit will may be instituted at the option of the plaintiff in either of the said courts which states that where the suit is filed for the compensation of the wrong done to a person or to movable property then that there is a jurisdiction of one court and the defendant resides carries on the business and personally work for gain within the local limits of the another court then it will be i upon the option it that the option will be to the plaintiff that to file the suit either before the one court or the another court 
example if a resides in delhi a residing in delhi beats b in calcutta then b has the option to sue a either in calcutta where b resides or file the suits in delhi where the a defendant resides here plaintiff that is b has the option to file the case where he resides that is in the local limits of the court of calcutta or in the or in the jurisdiction where the defendant resides in delhi if a another example a resides in delhi publishes in calcutta statement defamatory of a b may sue a either in calcutta b the plaintiff can sue a defendant in calcutta where the plaintiff resides or plaintiff that is b can file a suit against a that is defendant in the local limits of delhi in the jurisdiction of court of delhi section 20 other suits to be instituted a defendant resides or cause of action arises other suits will be filed when the defendant resides or the cause of action arises but subject to the limitations aforesaid every suit shall be instituted in a court within the local limits of a whose jurisdiction a the defendant or each of the defendants where there are more than one at the time of the commencement of the suits actually and voluntarily resides or carries on the business or personally work for gain or b any of the defendants where there are more than one at the time of commencement of the suit actually and voluntarily resides or carries on the business or personally work for gain provided that in such case either the leave of the court is given or the defendant who do not resides or carry on the business or personally work for gain as the foresaid acquiescence in such institutions or where the cause of action wholly or in part actually arises in this case we will have to understand here some basic points that the defendant there are more than two defendants clause a wants to say that there are more than two defendant the clause the defendant or each of the defendant where there are more than one they resides at the time of commencement of the suits at the time of commencement of the suits all of them reside at one place and actually and voluntarily resides there and carries on the business or personally work for gain then the within the local limits of that jurisdiction the suits will be filed or clause b wants to say that where any of the defendants where there are more than one defendant at the time of commencement suit at the time of commencement of the suit actually and voluntarily resides or carries business or personally work for gain provided that in such case either the leave of the court is given or the defendant who do not reside sir carry on the business or personally work for gain as of said like place in such institutions or where the cause of action actually arises whether in part or wholly in the local limits of the jurisdiction the suit will be filed by the plaintiff section 21 objection to jurisdiction subsection 1 no objection as to the place of suing shall be allowed the objection raised related to place of suing the place of institution of the case suit will be allowed by any appellate or regional court unless such objection was taken in the court or first instance at the earliest possible opportunity and in all cases where issues are settled at or before such settlement and unless there has been a consequent failure of justice no objection will be allowed by the appellate or regional court unless such objection was taken in the court of first instance at the earliest possible opportunity and in all cases where issues are settled at or before such a settlement and unless there has been a consequent failure of the justice sub section 2 no objection as to the competence of a court with reference to the pecuniary limits of its jurisdiction shall be allowed by any appellate or regional court no objection of as to the competence of a particular court whether the court is competent with reference to the pecuniary limits of its jurisdiction it shall be allowed by appellate or regional court unless such objection was taken in the court of first instance unless the such objection was taken in the court of the first instance at the earliest possible opportunity as early as possible and in all the cases where issues are settled at or before such settlement and unless there has been a consequent failure of justice section 3 subsection 3 no objection 
as to competence of the executing court with reference to the local limits of its jurisdiction no objection with respect to the competence of the executing court with reference to the local limits of its jurisdiction shall be allowed by any appellate or regional court unless such objection was taken in the executing court unless such objection was taken in the executing court at the earliest opportunity and unless there has been a consequent failure of justice if there has been a further failure of justice and taken at earliest possible opportunity then the objection of uh, relating to the competence of the executing court will be allowable mentionable can stand in the court in the same manner subsection 2 says that no objection will be allowed with respect to competence of a court uh, with reference to pecuniary limits of its court uh, unless it has the objection was taken in the court of the first instance at the earliest possible opportunity and uh, in all the cases where issue was settled uh, at or before such settlement and unless there has been a consequent failure of justice section 21a bar on suit to set aside decree on objection as to the place of swing no suit shall lie challenging the validity of the decree challenging the validity of the decree passed in a former suit uh, between the same parties or between the parties under whom they are they or any of them claim litigating under the same title on any ground based on an objection as to the place of swing no suit shall lie challenging the validity of a decree passed in a former suit uh, between the same parties or between the parties under whom they or any of them claim litigating under the same title on any ground based on any objection as to the place of swing the expression former suit former suit means a suit which has been decided prior to the decision former suit means a suit which has been decided prior to the decision in the suit in which the validity of decree is questioned whether or not previously decided suit was instituted prior to the suit in which the validity of such decree is questionable which means that former suit with respect to means the decision earliest which which has decided prior the suit whether it has been instituted earlier or not but the suit which has been decided prior the decree has been passed or order has been issued first the earliest possible that suit will be called as former suit let us read it again understand former suit means the suit decided prior in the suits in which the validity of the decree is questionable whether or not previously filed the decided suit was instituted prior in which the validity of the decree is questionable therefore section 21a section 21 section 20 section 19 section 18 relates to place of institution of suit where local limits of the jurisdiction of courts are uncertain section 219 suits for composition for wrongs to person or movables then section 20 other suits uh, to be instituted where defendants reside or cause of action actually arises whether a defendants objections to jurisdiction of the court the appellate court or regional court would decide whether in respect to the peculiarity limits or the executing court etc section 21a bar on suits to set aside decree on objections as to place of the swing in which the former suit means the suit which has been decided prior and will be decided based on the validity of the decree is questioned and previously decided suits which were instituted prior to the suits in the validity is questioned